Morning y'all. It's in Parfield. And we're in Iceland all week. Woo! Yeah. Right, first stop, Blue Lagoon. It's a little bit rainy though. Right, this week I'm gonna talk about, so it's gonna be kind of a, probably a week vlog because of I wanna spend time with the gang. And I'm gonna give you my 10 best tips. So what I mean is not these kind of throwaway tips, feely based kind of candy floshy stuff that everyone does. More just my, the best 10 things I've learned as a coach that I share with students that will help you improve your games. But some of them you just need to open your mind to because they're not as black and white as people always want them. But it should be fun. Let's go swimming in the rain. Right, lesson one, which changes everything when it first came around, and it changes so much for students still now, and that's face to path. Understanding that, that face kind of starts it, and path then shapes it and moves it. When you get students to change that in their head, it can make a massive difference to their learning kind of um, mentality, what they're happy to work on, and the changes they quickly make in their kind of performance. Face to path, massive one for students to learn from, keep learning that relationship. It's always so crucial in coaching. Morning, day two, and it's a dark Reykjavik. And it won't get much light until about 11.30, 11 o'clock in the morning, which is quite surreal. Next, huge thing that people learn, certainly when they have lessons with me, is that aim is functional. You don't have to aim at the target. Lots of great players don't, because if you're going to shape the ball, draw it or fade it, you don't want it to start at the target, do you? If you're going to draw it, you want it to start right and draw back. So then you might aim slightly up the right. Also, I shape my clubs differently. So my hybrid, I draw more than my... So my 23 hybrid, I draw more than my, tw my 17. So I aim them in different places. It's a product of, it's functional. I see too many golfers, clubs on the floor, practicing aiming dead straight, when actually, you don't need to aim that way if you want to get around a golf course successfully. This street is proper icy. I know. It's 9.40, nice. just so you could check on the old, how dark it still is. This camera's probably making it look quite light, but it's not, it's like nighttime dark. Icelandic jumper on. <laughs> that is snow. That is vanilla. And this is Iceland. Wow, look at this. Right, next bit. Really important this. This one is a game changer if you get your ha head around it. Like you could say, my jumper is a game changer. Plane is not path. So what people think about of angles as the club comes down, the kind of steep and flat, that kind of idea, they do not relate to path. Sometimes they do, but for most they don't. It's a massive confusion. When you get students to understand this, it totally frees them to make better moves, better ideas. My hand's shaking, it's so cold! This is Iceland, peoples. Right, geese are done. Time to eat our tea. Lunch. Lunch. Always gets that wrong. Next idea, people don't get this one as an idea, but it's so important, something I've really learned over the years, is controlling your emotions as, is as important as controlling your backswing. I've seen so many golfers have complete breakdowns of emotions in a negative way. So it, it's not as basic as just staying calm, because some people need to stay calm. That's what helps. Some people actually need to vent a bit of anger, that's what helps them. Think of McEnroe, those kind of ideas. But it's learning to control it in a way that works best for you, and I think so many people don't think about it. I see people self-destructing often, and we've all done it, because golf always wins, so I don't mean like everyone has a meltdown. I've had meltdowns on camera, Lockie does everything, everyone does. But it's learning how to best control them over the years that you play. So A, you keep enjoying it, and B, you get the most out of your day for what you need. It's such an important part. Now, we're going to the falls. Get some food. But before I go, my next top tip 
for you to get better is understanding what equipment can and can't do for you. I've seen lots of people lost in equipment searches for a long period of time. So often when they're in those equipment searches, they're not really thinking about the issue. So they're kind of almost stalemating themselves for that period of time. The view from this window is crazy good. Then as soon as you know what equipment can do for you, you start understanding how you can work their patterns into your patterns. So example, I've got one club, for instance, that always overdraws, but I like it. I might put some more weight on the toe if it allows it. You know, changeable weight ports, lead tape, different feeling shaft, different feeling grip, those kind of ideas. But I know it's only a small thing, and I also understand that it might be very superficial, as in it'll last, you know, like for around a few months, but I know it's not where the answer really lies. It's kind of just something that keeps me going. So understanding where equipment can really help, but also its limits as well. Massive lesson for everyone. Morning y'all, day three, we're going on an adventure. We've stopped, Milo has snow, armed with. No. Next idea, you've got to practice skills. Practicing skills is as important as practicing your backswing. Hitting it higher, hitting it lower, thinking about shaping it, thinking about what shapes you hit with certain clubs over other ones. Practicing the skills that you will use out on the course rather than just drilling a position on the range, which often doesn't really get used whenever you play. Such a key point. That's an impressive block of ice, guys. Yeah. Probably from one of these waterfalls or uh... Practicing your patterns, that is a waterfall. So practicing your patterns rather than fighting them for lots of students is a really crucial part for getting better. So I get lots of students who come to me who say, slice the ball, cut the ball. They want to learn how to draw it because they got this idea that drawing is better. You get them to draw it and then I still am not sure if they'll be any better. So what I mean by that is sometimes I get them aiming up the left and using their cut and we find out that their dispersion is actually slightly better that way than it is sometimes when you get them to draw the ball and they hit this desired shape and sometimes they squeeze a few more yards out not the draws go further than fade but their delivery promotes a different kind of delivery less laugh maybe different spin they get a bit more yardage out of it but they hit 10 or 20 shots and you think well i can't see them hitting the fairway that way because when they miss it's miles right or they overturn it so sometimes then you have to go back and work with their patterns and i think lots of golfers forget this working with your patterns rather Rather than just fighting them is absolutely key. Think Montgomery, think players like Tom Lehman, heavy shapers of the ball, just use their shape, didn't fight them, played one majors, one order of merit, some great players. That is beautiful. Right, Black Beach done. Unbelievable wins. Mrs. Barfield is a hat down. Hat down. And I'm a glove down. Because there was a gust. A mitten. Literally, mitten. Mitten down. Like I've never felt. I've never. It blew me over. Like it t I took two or three steps forwards. But we still got Orla. Don't worry. <laughs> She's still here. Say hello, Orla. Hi. <laughs> Face the path awareness during the club swinging around your body. That is such a crucial point for any student to get some kind of understanding of the twists, turns that they need to put in to control the face, which is often referred to as wrist angles, which is basically turning that club around the axis of the shaft. This car beeps as much as mine. Yep, there's another. So the more you can practice feeling different twists and turns and seeing how it shapes the ball, how it changes the face, the path, the more skilled you will get controlling lefts, right and straight. It's like getting the whole picture in one movement. Controlling face to path, so understanding what it might do if you twist it here, on the way down, on the way back, is just such a massive breakthrough and gets students feeling those ideas. That was the Black Beach, off we go. There's a big waterfall. Right, 
night we made it back to Reykjavik and that was quite an amazing drive. We go over this really high hill and the snow was meant, I've never driven on snow, it was quite hairy. And you can see the snow has landed and settling in Reykjavik as well. So we're going to go out and get some food one point before we go. Understanding that lessons is just info and ideas and you need to practice that info and those ideas. As a coach, as you get more experience as a coach, you start to realise that you actually have to tell people this at the start. You're a bit nervous and you kind of you feel like that maybe they should know this or even that you don't even think it's a point. But it's such an important point for coaches and for students to understand that as a student, if you go for a lesson, it's all on you. All on you to improve. All that coach can do is inspire or kind of give you ideas that might help, really try and give you phrases that might just click. But it should never stop how hard you should work on trying to improve improve your skills. I love going for lessons because I love trying to learn. I love the challenge of going back and showing my coach that I'd fixed <laughs> what they'd asked me to do. That's what I saw it as. I saw it as almost a game against them and with them. I see too many students falling into the trap thinking it's just, it's kind of on the coach. Oh, that lesson was no good. That coach didn't help me. I mean, there are aspects of that as well, but you've got to put the work in if you want to improve. Morning, y'all. It's time to go home. We're heading to the airport, but before we do... How's the snow all uh? Yes. Snowman construction. Construction. swinging in the snow, me and all <laughs> Strike is king. Oh my word, that was a long journey. But those kids are right, strike is king, and still not enough amateurs come to me. I see them on the course, something like Rory as well. They're not working strike into that big picture. They are just looking at results, and then they're thinking of faces and pass and trying to work out face to pass, which is great that they're trying to do that. But strike's going to dictate start points, curvatures height, spins, distances, carries, rolls, it's going to affect everything. If you want to improve, you've got to start at strike and work away from there. I do as a coach, you need to be doing it as a student as well. It's time to go to bed. I'm going to wrap this up tomorrow morning, I think. Morning, y'all. Right, just to finish, hope that helps. What an amazing trip that was. Thanks for coming with us. Let me know if any of those tips have helped you over the years or you're still getting your head around them. And I, the more we can get away from thinking that tips are just like these little throwaway candy floss and we can start talking, thinking more about the facts and the ideas around things that are really improving golfers, I think the better you will all get. Shall we do a competition winner time? So the Put Out and Chrome Soft winners are here. There are the two winners. Congratulations. You've got almost a year supply of balls as long as you're not coach Lockie or Raimondo from your golf travel and your putting should get better now because you've got one of the best teaching putting age training age you can get and it also looks classy thanks all for watching I will see you on Monday yes Christmas Day gonna have a special Christmas message for you on Christmas Day got a big announcement as well as I almost feel like quite a regal message around three o'clock it might post on Christmas Day have a good weekend